my name is Jessica and I'm from the Chesterfield Museum. Today I'm going to talk to you about our memory boxes. They cover a wide variety of different topics and help engage, support and share those special memories. Memories are so important because they help make us who we are. And our memory boxes are a wonderful way to explore and reminisce about those special moments. The objects in these boxes can rekindle old memories and help people to talk about their life. This can be a really great help to people who are living with dementia. I'm going to show you a few items from our going shopping box. This is great for reminiscing about the things you might buy from local shops. The first item is this brown paper and inside you can find a fish. Up until about the 1960s, meats and fish tended to be wrapped in a similar brown paper or a greaseproof paper as plastic didn't tend to be used for this kind of thing back then. Can you remember buying some food and having it wrapped in a similar kind of brown paper? And what kind of food did you buy? The next item I'd like to show you is this ration book. These were used during and after the Second World War and they were issued to every member in a household. These were books that contained coupons that would be cut out by shopkeepers and exchanged for food, clothes and other items. The colour of your ration book was very important as it determined how much food you would get in according to your age and your health. Most adults would have the buff coloured ration book like this one here, but there was also the green ration book. This was for pregnant women, nursing mothers and children under the age of five. There was also a blue ration book and this was for children between the ages of five and 16 and this ensured that they got fresh fruit, a full meat ration, and also a half pint of milk each day. Food was rationed to ensure that everybody could get a fair share of what food and supplies there were available. The government was worried that if food became scarcer and more expensive, people might not be able to afford it. And there was also the danger of people hoarding things that they might not need straight away. So rationing was introduced to allow everybody to get their fair share of what was available. Can you remember using the ration books? And can you remember when sweets came off ration and how exciting that was? The next item is Life Boy Soap. Life Boy Soap was introduced by the Lever Brothers in 1895 as a carbolic soap. It was very popular from 1923 to the 1950s and it has a very strong medicated smell and I can smell this from the packaging, it's such a strong scent. So apart from being really well known from its really recognisable scent, it was also famous for its red and yellow packaging, which is very striking and looks great to this day, and being red and rectangular in its shape. And it was used in wash tubs. Before a washing machine was in every household, Lifebuoy was used in wash tubs to clean your clothes. And it could also be used as a regular household everyday soap as well. So it was multi-purpose as well. Can you remember the smell of Lifebuoy soap? And can you remember washing your clothes by hand using the soap? Next, I have this bag to show you. This bag is made from plastic, but they used to be made from string or cotton. And it was perfect for popping in your handbag and taking to the shops. And placing fruits and vegetables in the bag. And in a way, they are kind of similar to the canvas bags we use today. It's a bag that we can reuse and just pop back into our handbags for the next time we need it. Can you remember using a bag like this? Or your mother using one to go shopping? And what kind of items would she put in the bag? This next image is green shield stamps. They were a form of trading stamp given when buying food or petrol from Tesco. A bit like the Tesco club card today. Families would save up all their stamps and then have a mammoth sticking in night and getting excited about what they could exchange their stamps for. Once you had counted up all of your stamps, you could then choose something from a catalogue in exchange for the stamps that you had collected. Can you remember anything that you or your family ordered using your Green Shield stamps? Can you remember sticking in the stamps in the book? And can you remember the excitement that all the family felt when the order finally arrived. Brillo pads were introduced in 1913 and they became really popular. They came at a time when big heavy cast iron pans were being swapped for aluminium and the aluminium pots and pans blackened really easily. 
Nothing was as effective as Brillo pads for scouring off any dirt, but they didn't really do your pans any good. When Brillo pads had been used, they had a really distinct smell and they would leave rust and stains in the soap dish. Can you remember the smell of Brillo pads? And can you remember the stains they used to leave if you didn't remember to throw them away? This image is of a receipt from Swallows. Swallows was quite an upmarket department store in Chesterfield, which stood where the Oxfam shop is now, just on the corner of Burlington Street and Packers Row. Many people look back fondly on it as one of the last big independent shops in town. Founded in 1862, it was essentially a department store. Swallows sold house furnishings, different fabrics, and also good quality ladies' and men's clothing. The business unfortunately closed in 1970. Can you remember where Swallows was? Did you ever buy anything from Swallows? And did you ever just have a little wander around the store on a Saturday afternoon? The next item I want to show you is this toffee tin. Toffee tins were a really popular present and you could find really different beautiful designs. So they became a really nice gift to give somebody. This tin is from the 1950s, but the sweets themselves were made from the 1920s onwards and you could buy them in the co-op. The sweets themselves were brown and white toffee swirls and they sound really delicious. Can you remember buying toffee in tins like this? And what did you keep in the tin once the toffees were gone? People kept buttons and sewing kits and different collections of treasures inside their toffee tins. The next item is this cod bottle. Cod bottles were invented in 1870 by Hiram Cod. They were used in bottles containing carbonate and mineral water and fizzy drinks. A glass marble was built into the bottle and when the fizzy liquid was put into the bottle, the marble was held up against the neck of the bottle by the gas and kept the liquid in. If I rattle the bottle, you can hear that the marble is still in there. T.P. Woods of Chesterfield probably used this method to keep the drinks carbonated that he created. Have you ever seen one of these bottles? And can you remember what kind of drink you might have had from one of these? The final item in today's box is this purse of old coins. Decimalization was a big event in the 1970s and seemed to roll out over a long period of time. The old threepenny piece disappeared altogether. The half crown became 12 and a half pence. The shilling became five pence two shilling piece became 10 pence and the 10 shilling note became the 50p piece. Training took place in workplaces for weeks beforehand and it took a very long time for some people to give up the old money names. Look at this coin and how many sides it has. Can you remember using this? And do you remember the Max Bygreave song that was called Decimalization? You can see how large and different these coins are from the coins we have today. And old coins were very heavy too, compared with today's coins. Can you remember using some of these old coins? Can you remember swapping over to the coins that we use today? Thank you so much for watching this video about our going shopping memory box, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you.